Here we are on another mobile edit Monday tutorial. Today, we have a photo that I took from the plane that I was traveling on. This is about a year ago, give or take. And I just love the way that you can see the city through the clouds. And then you have this blue sky up at the top. And there's the reflection of the window that was across the aisle from me at the top of the photo here as well. Today, what we're going to do is modify this inside of Luminar Neo, but I'm going to go ahead and make a few adjustments here in Apple Photos before we jump over there. And I think that's just going to be me modifying the light just a bit uh, by pulling to the right, maybe. And I don't have a, a full plan of what I want to do with this image yet. This is just how I edit photos, right? I open them up. I see what I have, and then I go from there to see what I want to do. Now, maybe by modifying the vibrance or pulling it down. No, I don't I don't want to take away the blue. I really like the blue. So I think I'm going to leave everything as is with just that one little universal light adjustment, global edit across the entire image. Now, what I'm going to do is hit the three dots and we're going to jump into Luminar Neo. And the reason I'm using Luminar Neo today is because it actually has a lot of the same capabilities that we have inside of Alt One Effects. Um, but what I want to do inside of Luminar Neo is one, I don't use this software enough, so it's going to be kind of like a learning curve. But I think that there's going to be some opportunities to really make some differences. But the first thing that I want to do here is just get rid of this thing up at the top. And I can do that by using the erase tool. And I am just going to pull up on my brush size for the eraser itself. And I'm going to select all of this up here because we don't need that. And then I guess you got to come back over here and hit erase after you've done it. And boom. Now we have a clean sky and I really dig that. Now over here on the right hand side, we have some of the airplane. I think I was at the end or on the back side of the airplane. So this is like the back part of the wing. I don't really need that in the image. Uh, I can remove it by using the um, erase tool. So I'm just going to click there and click there. We'll hit erase. That way I don't have to worry about cropping and it didn't quite get that little spot. So let's try it again. There we go. And we'll also come down here and get rid of this little piece as well. And this is one of the cool things about software today and technology. Like I have the ability to get rid of things that I probably wouldn't have been able to in the past. Like the things I got rid of are pretty minor, but I mean, just going a with a before and after just look at that that to me is amazing so i'm thankful to have software like this now that i've got all of that cleaned up i think it's time to work on the more creative edit and i think now that i'm looking at it uh, the goal is probably going to be making this area down here opening up some of the shadows down there while bringing in some contrast over the clouds here. And then I'll figure out what I want to do with the sky. So I think a lot of these are going to be uh, local adjustments just because of the way that I personally like to edit. So I'm going to use the develop tool here. And I just want to minimize that because I feel like that's taking up more space than it needs to. And I make them globally before I start to mask them in. So I'm just going to pull up on the exposure and maybe even throw in some smart contrast. And all I'm doing is looking at this area down here right now. I know it's impacting the entire image, but if you can just focus in on what's happening down here just for a little bit, uh, I'm sure it'll make a little bit more sense. And then I think I'm going to open up the shadows just a touch. And I think it will stand to uh, have a little bit of sharpening. Now, again, these are 8-bit files, so 
I don't have a whole lot of wiggle room. That's kind of the challenge with using an iPhone, but I think that that's okay. Now, turning this off and on, I think that's working uh, quite well. I'm just going to have to be very cautious about how I mask this in. So I'm going to come over to the masking and I am going to click on more actions and invert this. And now I get to go and paint this in by using the brush because I could use the AI tools. I just don't feel like it's going to give me the leverage that I need. Uh, and then for the strength, I'm going to actually pull this down uh, below 50. I don't know exactly how Luminar uses its strength. So that's why I personally want to go below 50 and it's okay if I have to build this up. But now I'm just going to paint this in over the areas and it gives me this red overlay, which I do appreciate because it lets me know where I'm painting and I'm just going to paint over this area as well. And then I'll come over here and paint this area in. And I'm okay if I go over the clouds just a little bit uh, because I'm going to come back and, and really work on those. But if I turn this effect off and on, it is a little subtle, but it's what I think works the best for, for uh, my edit. And I wonder if in Luminar, if I can stack these like I can in on one where I can just paint over all of these one more time to add in just one more pass of this particular edit. So I think that all of that works. And that's all I really wanted to do was bring in that attention. Now it's time to do a little bit of dodging and burning to the clouds here and really hone in some of that contrast. So I'll close the develop there and let's see if there is something, you know, let's try super contrast and I wonder, okay, so if I pull up on, let me pull this up. If I pull up on the highlight contrast here, that kind of works. Let's see midtone contrast. And again, I got to mask these things in, but what I'm looking at is the clouds right now and just seeing what I can do with the clouds. I don't think shadow contrast is going to do me any good. In fact, I'm not sure if super contrast is the tool that I really need to be using right this second. Um, I may have to come back to the develop tool, but let's try structure AI and let's just boost the amount. Okay, I do like what this is doing with the clouds. But again, I'm going to have to mask this in. Uh, if I turn this off and turn it back on, I do like what it's doing with the clouds. I know clouds should be like soft and, and cuddly and fluffy and all that goodness. But I just want to experiment, right? I want to push my photography uh, thought process beyond what everyone else would expect to see. And that's just a personal preference for me. So I'm going to go with the masking. And this time I'm going to try the AI mask. I know that this is going to take a little bit of time, so just bear with me, but I'll speed through this portion. So that way you can see what the AI mask can do. Okay. That wasn't too bad. If I click the sky and that's all that it selected. So it didn't even see the clouds, not going to be able to do that, but I will use a trusty brush here. And again, I'm just going to pull down on the strength. This time I'll go about 55. I'm going to make the brush a little bit larger and I am using a hundred percent softness and I'm just going to go, Oh, well, I forgot to invert the mask. So let's invert that. So that way it's not applying anywhere. So if I hit show, yeah, there we go. So now it's not applying anywhere. So if I hit the brush, I can paint this over this area. And I'm just going to do a fairly loose job at painting this in uh, because I don't need to be as precise. I don't think it just needs to be something that you can see the effect and it makes sense. Now, 
we need to turn off the mask. We'll turn that off. Uh, and for whatever reason, I guess I'm painting it so softly in that it's not actually doing anything. So we'll have to come back over here and repaint. So I'll come back to the brush and paint over it one more time because, you know, it's just not showing up. And I could edit all of this out and let you see me work like pristinely and perfectly. Uh, but I don't think that that's fair to you as the viewer, because when you're running into struggles and you're like, why don't I get the edit that Chris is getting? Well, it's because sometimes you have to do a trial and error. And, you know, that was looking way more intense originally than what I'm getting now. So let me just pull up on this. Uh, I thought I was getting a little bit more crunchiness in those clouds. It's not as crunchy as I had hoped, but it's there nonetheless. So let's keep it moving. Let's come back over to our develop and let's pull down on the exposure. Yeah. Now I really like what this is doing to those clouds. All right. Um, and maybe we'll mess around with some smart contrast. Uh, I'm not a fan of the color cast that it's throwing on there. So I'll throw up on the highlights just a little bit. And let's go ahead and invert this. We'll grab a brush. And again, I'm going to pull down on the strength because I think that that is wise. And we're just going to brush this over all of these clouds because I really liked what I was getting when I did that. So I'll brush this over all the clouds. And this adjustment is giving me more of that contrast that I was really looking for getting uh, or looking to get out of the overall image. So now it's just fine tuning how this all works out. Uh, if I pull on the blacks, start to get a little bit more interesting. And so let's look at the. This is what we came into Luminar Neo with, and this is what we've gotten so far. It is not the most transformative edit, uh, but I think it's starting to come together just a little bit more. So now let's try Enhance AI, and I always love to throw a little bit of Accent AI on my photos. Uh, and this is starting to make the photo look a little overbaked. Right. So this is the original image, which is a little soft and it has some dynamics to it. And this is just starting to overbake it. So you got to know when to say when. And I think that that is the limit to what I can do with the accent AI. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that out because I'm not going to worry about that anymore. Now. Let's see what else we can do. I wonder what I can do with a landscape. So if I dehaze this, uh, I'm not liking what that does to those clouds. Um, so maybe landscape won't work for this particular image. And, you know, I wonder if I go black and white, let's convert this to black and white. Hmm. I'm actually kind of digging the black and white. And I think that this works the best for the image. Now, I know that there's a lot of blue in the image. So if I pull down on the blue and then let's modify the cyan a little bit. I'm really liking this image in black and white and the conversion that I was able to get by going to black and white. So this is without black and white. This is with it. I think I'm going to go with a black and white image because this makes the most sense for the overall image. Now, what I need to do is come back to my edits. And in one of these develops, I think I increased the shadows just a little too much and overexposed just a little too much. So let's come back here. And I think that this works quite well. I'm actually really liking this. What did I do with this develop? 
pull down on the exposure. So let's pull that back. Let's pull the get these highlights back in control. And maybe, yeah, I like the separation, but I think I may have increased the whites just a little too much. So now we're getting that more natural feel. So the last thing that I think I'll do inside of Luminar Neo, and again, I could have done this inside of On One Effects, but I just want to use Luminar today. Uh, you know what? What I couldn't do inside of On One is use the Relight tool. So I wonder what I can do with the brightness far and where is that? Okay, I, I kind of like what this is. This is going to do for us. Yeah, so now it's like making a little bit more interesting uh, concept of what's going on with the light. It may be a little too heavy handed and I wish that there was a opacity slider so I can kind of back this off because by backing off the effect, it doesn't really help all that much. Um, wonder what happens if I pull up on the light near. So I don't know. I'm not really feeling that at all. So we'll leave the relight alone. I thought that would be something that could work. Uh, obviously I could add in fog, but that just doesn't make as much sense. Although maybe modifying the, the sky, uh, using a fog slider when I probably should be using a develop and a linear gradient, but the fog slider seems to be working quite well with, uh, making that sky just a little bit less like giving it a gradient almost. Because if I turn this off, the sky is just like super dark. But if I turn this back on, I think that works out. So I'm actually going to leave that. Didn't expect to leave that, but I will. Uh, but what I do want to add is some grain. So I'm just going to pull up on the amount of the grain slider here. And man, I wish I could, again, mask this in using opacity or like blend this in using opacity. Uh, because there is a lot of grain and I like the texture that it's adding to the overall image. It's very subtle, but I really do like it. So I'm going to go with it. Here is what we came into Luminar Neo with. And here is the photo that I'm going to end the tutorial on. So hopefully you found value. Let me know in the comment section if you prefer the color version or if you prefer the black and white. So one more time, this is the color version and here's the black and white. If you preferred the black and white, let me know. If you preferred the color, let me know. If you got questions or if you wanna pick up Luminar Neo, there is an affiliate link down in the description box below. If you use that, it does help this channel, keeps me making content and it's a way that you can support the channel at no extra charge to you. So until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.